Hey guys, Jeremy here. Sorry it took me so long to get around to this video. I have admittedly tried, but we're in the last few weeks of our show and it's just been an absolute drainer in terms of just trying to stay awake. But I'm finally doing it. These are the comments that you guys left in the community tab page of the poll that I did for what your thoughts were of season 15. In the end, the number one choice was in the middle of the road for you guys, being a 4 out of 7 in terms of my rating system. If you've seen my video, link right up here, I gave it a 2.5 out of 7. Never done a 0.5 ever and I figured that this was an okay time to do so but these are your guys' thoughts on what you thought the sorry I'm trying to do my cufflink here I, I want your thoughts are of the season and I'm just gonna read out your guys' comments and uh, you guys have got a lot of cool and interesting perspectives I just woke up admittedly so apologies if I'm a little bit slurry but Let's go and see what you guys have to say. The season as a whole definitely wasn't the greatest. I thought it could have been spread out better. Episode 19 felt rushed, but after watching it a second time, I enjoyed it much more. With that said, I loved the series finale, except for Sam's awful aging makeup, lol. But I didn't even care about that in the moment. Sam and Dean were doing what they should have done, uh, been doing more of recently, trying to save people and hunt things. People called Dean's death cheap or whatever, but we have to think about the fact that now Chuck is gone and Jack is a new god, they don't have that plot armor anymore. Jack even said he wasn't going to be hands-on. I actually thought it was appropriate death and I cried my eyes out watching the scene. Dean went out hunting, how he always knew he would. Like Dean said during that scene, you don't even know when you're going to go out. It can happen at any time, anywhere. And then Sam got to live the life he always wanted, even if he said he didn't. I give Dab a lot of credit, he did write some absolute shit this season, but I thought that he nailed the finale. It felt true to the brothers, true to the show that I love. I'm so sad to see it end, but I'm happy that they gave it the ending it deserved. The show has always been about Sam and Dean, and that's how it needed to end. I hope they leave it as is. Don't try to make a movie or anything, I think it's a perfect place. Sam and Dean just got to hang out in heaven forever, keep it that way. I will say that despite, as this person says, all of the crap that Dab gave us over the last few years, I'm quite surprised that the ending wasn't garbage. I like the ideas of it. I feel that maybe they should have given it a f another go or two with the death scene. I just think that just some of the lines, like Jensen goes back and forth from delivering his lines great to delivering them kind of poorly. And again, just how they did it, he should have been impaled. I know they're trying to cheap it out and also make it less Ooh. I, I feel that he should have been just impaled like he should have been at least from the front is it looks like he's just having like hey, like see me over here i've been impaled Ooh. Mm. sam if, mm -hmm. That's sort of what it felt like to me watching it, but I, I got the concept of what they were trying to do. Some of the episodes, like them meeting Garth again, became my new favorite episodes of Supernatural. Uh, Supernatural has had been hit or miss recently when it, it came to single story episodes past season 7, so it was good seeing the ones near the end. It's funny enough, actually, the Garth episode, I hate that episode. I love the concept of it, I like the idea of them losing their luck. Because certain jokes, like the car, no way could it actually be alive after all the time that they've driven. No way could they all have the perfect teeth and whatnot. I thought that was a good idea in theory, but certain things like they couldn't pick locks anymore even though that they've been doing it all their life. They couldn't win fights anymore even though they've been training all their life. Yeah, there's ideas of plot armor and whatnot, but I thought that it was kind of very silly. However, Garth is one of the few characters of this season who I feel got an actually good ending. Like, he, he got a decent ending. He's probably one of the best endings for a character in this show in this season. Everything after season 11 is a 4 out of 10. Eh, yeah, I, I almost agree with you on that. Uh, the only season out of all of these that I'd be willing to maybe rewatch at least a few episodes would be season 12, because season 12 does have regarding Dean, which is the last time I ever gave a Supernatural episode a 7 out of 7 in the last four years. It's a 3 out of 7 for me, but that's not too bad after season 5 Supernatural episode. Man, I can't wait to get to season 5. I'm like very excited when I eventually get there, which might be like sometime next year, maybe. I want to give it a 5 or a 6, but would feel too much and uh, 4 is too little. 
Oh god, I misread. Somehow I was thinking about the ranking of the last episode <laughs> with the whole season. Not even a 4. 3 slash 2 is what I would give it. Yep, that's pretty much what I thought too. I love how the whole season was a callback to every season of the show. I wouldn't break down how to save you from all the bore boredom of ramblings. I know that Sam, the moment Sam said in the previous season that Chuck's fear towards Jack, that he was the one to defeat God. To see Dean at his lowest point of doubt and to realize who, who he really is is enjoyable. I love how Sam trying to find a way to stop Chuck through the, his pains. It was referring to see, it was refreshing to see Adam wasn't a traumatized Winchester from a terrible date after all. I love how all the cosmic players except Jack and kind of Amara couldn't defeat the Winchesters. The explanation of where the pagan gods and goddesses came from was interesting and enjoyable. Sam and Dean losing their heroic umph was hilarious and I thought Garth had a happy ending. Cassiel being the brother and father figure is really got my emotions, especially at with his death and Jack being poetically compassionate towards all the influence God has had on his creations was touching. The writers have said that they inserted themselves into Chuck so any Andrew Dab haters can hate Chuck more and happy with his defeat if they can make a mirror <laughs> make him a mirror to Andrew Dab. I love that they got a happy ending for the season finale and the series finale was perfect to me. My official order from least the greatest supernatural seasons are what you've got three in the no can't agree with this list almost seven wow you're like the only person who likes seven that much 15 is oh wow you put 15 above 11 Ooh. and eight yeah a lot of people say eight is a good season so i'm interested to see but above five i don't know we'll see about that i gave it a four to seven probably translates to a six uh, ten on my eye scale but i'm not sure how ours would align I feel the same about this as uh, I feel about the same as I do with the seasons 10 and 12, which is where some great ideas and some solid episodes, but I just think it's kind of a giant mess. The season had this weird stop and go momentum, which is probably due to Dab's obsession with dropping storylines, which you bring up a lot. For instance, the cliffhanger is resolved within three episodes. Stop. Then the whole another plot starts up again with Sam's connection to Chuck. Episode 9 happens and Chuck removes the bullet wound. Stop. Then a third plot with the, about their luck, and they get it back. Stop. And then Jack has to kill God, but God fuses with Amara, and everything goes to shit. Stop. It's like Dab had several ideas for the season and decided to cram them all in, but instead of doing them at once, he segmented them out. In theory, it could work, but it just leads to the, the season having absolutely terrible pacing. And then there's some awesome episodes this season. I love uh, number eight with the introduction, reintroduction of Michael. I found 12 with the gambling and explanation of the gods to be really cool. And I absolutely love 17 and 18, even if Castiel's goodbye was a bit too soap opery. I wish I feel like, uh, like 19 more. It's not awful, but man, it's a downgrade and underwhelming finale. Not only does it completely rush, feel rushed and chaotic, seriously, there's like five episodes of television in 42 minutes, but it also feel, does absolutely nothing with what the prior two episodes set up. It couldn't have, it could have been an awesome finale, but instead it's just a dud. I feel like the, all the ideas, and I like some of the episodes itself, but it's just a mess. Overall, pretty weak season, and someone who liked... 13 and rather enjoyed 14 despite it being a mess. I think 15 is among 10 and 12 for being so painfully okay and frustrating watches. That's actually a pretty good way to describe my memories of 10. Because what was it? There was a whole Demon Dean thing for three episodes and then that was over. Then there was that whole hunt, that guy who was hunting Dean because of what his actions were as Demon Dean and that was over. I'm surprised that guy never came back. Not even like a reference whatsoever. And he was supposed to be something kind of but yeah that's been a big issue with dab is he has segments but they never go anywhere there's never like an overall connecting arc he just can kind of come up with in between episodes is why he was an in between episode writer for so long if you rewatch it as a whole i think it's much better i'm thinking it's a pretty good season overall the last couple of episodes made it for me the filler episodes however sucked ass which is really unfortunate since they tend to be some of my favorite episodes i think this season had great ideas but poor execution at times Pretty good for 15 years. Eh, yeah, like it wasn't a tired dumpster fire. It wasn't the greatest thing, admittedly, but it wasn't a dumpster fire. Overall, I like season 15. It started out somewhat good with the bullet thing and setting up Chuck as a viable villain, but then it just went into horrible, uh, boring filler territory. 
That wasn't even one last creative filler episode like Baby in season 11. It also seems like they didn't know what to do with Jack. He was not in the first half of the season aside from the demon possessing his meat suit. The second half had him just stalling time to face Chuck. The season, the way this season was structured was lackluster. Didn't have issues with the first half, but the second half was basically filler with no integral plot in them. They didn't do much with the big players like Amara, Michael, especially Michael. If it had, and it had a very easy final confrontation with Chuck. Episodes 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 11, 14, 17, 19, and 20 were episodes I found to be actually good. The Brothers Were Going to Heaven was the only good ending that would have made sense. It's not the best, but it also is not the worst way either. So while I do feel the season was, as a whole was okay, I'll give it some passing good because while I watched the last episode, I realized that this is the last time I would hear Carry On My Wayward Son seeing the Impala and the Brothers. I will greatly miss the show. It's been with me for a big chunk of my life. So thank you, Supernatural, for 15 years, and thank you, Jeremy, too, for talking about the most recent season since season 11. Can't wait for season 4. Or ep uh, 10 episodes from you, which is going to take two to three years. <laughs> oh, season four to ten, um, which is going to take you two to like two to three years to do every season, like just like season one. Yeah, I'm going to try and do season. I'm going to not do them as long as season one. Season one, I don't know why it took me so long. That was the most amount of procrastination I've ever done in my life, amongst other things. But uh, yeah, I, I see where you're coming from in terms of like not being able to see it again. However, like I said, once I stepped back and I took the rose tinted glasses off being that we've been watching the show for 15 years the overall season is not that great but it definitely relied a lot on us holding on to that nostalgia and if you do hold on to that then yeah it's not the worst season but without those glasses on you can see a lot of the flaws but thank you I, I am looking forward to getting on to season four and yeah I don't know how long I've done the math and if I did it the way I think I'm gonna do it, it might take me two to three years, but that's also a lot to do in two to three years. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm giving it a two. The only reason I didn't give it a one because I think season 14 is the weakest, but this season was definitely a close second. The lack of focus, not being able to commit to any of the stories is like trying to tell inconsistent characterization, bad dialogue and lack of consequences of poor choice and villain. Having Jack, uh, be the primary character to save the world instead of the two heroes we've been following for 15 years, etc. The list of problems could go on. The, fi the finale was half satisfying, but it was built on such a terrible foundation that I don't think it could have been uh, been more than that. Yeah, that's a kind of similar basis there. I, very similar mindsets, you and I there. In my opinion, Swan Song was the superior series finale. It left a sense of mystery and it let your imagination wander while still having closure for what they had been building up to. However, this finale had a great final scene, but I would have personally done things differently, such as have Dean die in a pre uh, penultimate episode, sacrificing himself to weaken God. Then in the finale, everyone from the series gathers around Dean's funeral, and they would have had Hunter's wake like how... Oh, sorry. Gotta open it. Like how they did in season 12. We see Sam build a life with Eileen, have a son, fight for about hunting, and then they get older, and then Sam gets really old and dies, leaving his son and old er, Claire and some of the other hunters in, inherit the bunker and continue the legacy. Then Sam and Dean reunite in heaven, and Dean tells him how heaven changed and who's there, but be, before they can enjoy heaven, they all know they they know all the, all they have to they have all the time to do that so just embrace each other and take a long ride in baby i can see how that could have worked because the idea of dean sacrificing himself at the end of episode 19 and then going into season 20 and episode 20 and having those parallels with dean being in heaven and sam living out his life the only problem with that is as you saw there's not a lot they could have done with dean in heaven they just even if covid wasn't around Maybe they could have done some things like Dean could have met up with old like all the other people who have died in this show um, But that would have like the Dean part would have been hard Sam No, because there's so much that could have been shown and that's something that I kind of didn't enjoy about the montage element of it I I do wish that we had seen more of Sam living out his life considering this was the thing that he wanted all the way back in season one so it's an it's a it's a not a bad idea, but admittedly, there's probably going to be some people who are going to make their own fan fiction versions of their own retcons of this ending. So, 
there's already some that have actually had some pretty good ideas. I said that, I think, in my series, in my episode 20 review uh, comment read. As a whole, season 15 was okay. It certainly set up from, it was certainly a, set up, a step up from season 12, 13, 14, but it brings with it a lot of problems and some new problems as well. Some of the writing is just plain lazy and pointless, but not completely terrible filler episodes feel very out of place. That's not to say that there wasn't, or there weren't great episodes. Episodes 4, 5, 6, 8, 11, and, 7, and 17 were great, but the filler episodes still dragged the season down. In terms of plot points, the plot in the first three episodes felt rushed and was boring, except for episode 3, which wasn't terrible. The whole dream thing in episode 4 with Sam killing Dean was interesting, and I wanted to see where the story would have gone, but of course they dropped it. The whole god... Well, the whole god was getting rid of Sam and Dean's ability to do things was kind of interesting at first, but it very quickly brought it along a lot of problems, like how them not being able to pick locks, even though they've been taught and practiced it at a young age, like kind of undermines what it where it came from. Yes, exactly. And finally, the whole plot, God is a villain. I was actually on board at first after Amara, the most obvious vision a villain, main villain, should have been should have been God, and as a final season, uh, final season villain. It would have worked. Unfortunately, Chuck was just not very threatening or interesting, and I lost all hope, and they could have made him a great villain like Lucifer and Amara very early on. Then there's the finale, which I actually enjoyed. Yes, it was safe and kind of predictable, and the budget was just not there, but I don't know, man. I smiled when Carry On My Wayward Son started to play. When Dean saw Bobby and the final shot made me feel kind of satisfied. I also wanted to address the criticism of how of, on why Cass was not in the episode. First of all, I'm pretty sure that Bobby said that Jack and Cass both fixed heaven, meaning that Jack still resurrected Cass. The reason why I'm okay with Cass not being there in the in the episode, however, is because if he was there, then this would make the death scene in episode 18 lose all emotion that it had, might have, might have had. Overall, the season was better than the last three seasons, but it still did not justify itself being the final season, where season five and even season eight would have been a better final seasons. I understand that definitely a good point about not having Cass be there physically because, yeah, his sacrifice would have been completely in vain. But then again, the idea of death on this show has never existed. And I actually have lost count of how many times Cass has died throughout the entire show. By the time when he died, 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 at the end of <laughs> episode 18, and I was like, man, actually, how many times has he died? So I'm going to be doing a death count for Castiel as I continue through, um, at least up until the end of 10, because I know he dies several times. Several times. The season as a whole was boring and bland with no character development from the main cast. Even in the finale, Sam and Dean... Oh, sorry. Season 15 wasn't as bad as 12 or 14, but it was close. The entire season felt like the writers dragging their feet towards the finale. Too many filler episodes and monster hunts wherein Sam and Dean should have been dealing with the bigger threat, Chuck. How many episodes did we have where the boys were looking through books in the bunker saying to each other, Have you found anything that can stop Chuck only to decide to go out on a hunt while God was destroying entire universes before coming back to destroy their world? Hello, what good is hunting when God is about to destroy your reality? That actually point is very true. That was a huge problem in season seven. That was how they started so many episodes. Like, have you got anything about Chuck? No, we got nothing about Chuck. Okay, filler episode. That was the majority of season seven. So that was also evident in this one as well. The storytelling was laughable, plus way too many plot conveniences and, contri and contrivances, especially with the first couple of episodes when Sam and Dean really easily solved the problem of Chuck releasing all the ghosts and demons from hell with a simple spell from a conveniently placed demon who takes over Jack's vessel. There was no tension or stakes because we all know that the characters who die will just be brought back. Rowena, Jack, Lucifer, Castiel, Lilith, Charlie, Bobby, Mary, Winchester, and the list goes on with everyone who's died and has been brought back. Even seeing Dean and Sam in heaven felt hollow because Jack is God now and that leaves the door open to having him bring the boys back to life to fight future threats. What exactly am I supposed to take away from the finale? Sam and Dean get to live happily ever after in heaven while monsters run free on Earth with no replacements for the boys? Shouldn't there have been some passing of the torch to a new group of hunters? I would have preferred an ending where Sam and Dean have to make a difficult decision that challenges the characters now that Chuck is, isn't God. What are the point of defeating Chuck and finally being free from his influence if it doesn't really play much of a factor in the story other than the sudden anticlimactic death of Dean only for him to go give up on life? and abandon his brother. 
Does that mean Sam uh, Dean's love for Sam was primarily the product of Chuck's influences? There's so much potential for the characters to change and come to terms with who their characters are and how much their actions and behaviors were the result of, the out of an outside influence. So much lost character and story potential just to force a corny happy ending. That's actually a kind of a good point. There is like that very small anecdote of Sam's son having the demon the anti-possession uh, tattoo on. But yeah, there isn't really a passing of the torch and Something that also a lot of people brought up apparently is that when they killed the Alpha God knows how many years ago There shouldn't be any vampires and then also they you had that whole set up with all the monsters that the monster army that Evil Dean set up in season 14 and that just like Went away. I like many of dabs things also like I was really waiting to see Heaven have some impact like Amanda tapping came back for that one episode to drop that bombshell that heaven is essentially breaking and they didn't touch on it at all until like a line of dialogue from Bobby in the finale. There was a few elements that they could have worked on and then yeah kind of the idea of Sam and Dean like they didn't defeat Chuck to kind of save the world they did it for their own sakes really kind of almost in a selfish way when you look at it and there isn't any perspective on that. So that's actually a good point. That is something of a more of a retrospective look on that. The season as a whole was boring and bland with no character development from the main cast. Even in the finale, Sam and Dean are reunited in the end in a strangely boring version of heaven. Again, lowering the stakes. They could have just left it at Sam learning to go on with Dean, but with the hope that they'll meet again. But no, we don't even get to see the woman he marries. Maybe if Sam's life after Dean had been given more than over two minutes of screen time, and more than five dollars in budget, the passage of time would have been more impactful. Ca Dean, and Dean and Cass's death scenes were boring too. Really cliche writing and awkward acting. Their fight choreography this season was the worst. And honestly, after 15 years, why do the villains keep flinging them into walls that they when they can easily kill them? Also, no final resolution on Chuck or any of the any of the fan favorite characters like Jody and the girls. Garth and Eileen throughout the season. A lot of loopholes and questions unanswered, super unsatisfying for me overall. Garth got, did get a good ending, but yeah, Jody. Jody, wow, what a, like, if anyone got, the only other person I can say that got a, like a worse treatment in this season would have been Eileen, because she never came back after the whole cell phone thing, and, um, and, and Michael slash Adam. That, that was terrible. And Jody, like I wanted to see Jody so bad. I love that actress. She's so good. She's so funny. Um, she actually reminds me a little bit of my old landlord. Um, but she was just this really pleasant character, and I was very upset that we never got any finale with her. Um, and yeah, like the death scenes, the acting, it's just it was kind of odd. And the flinging thing. It, Terminator salvation logic of these villains. Just keep throwing them until they eventually die. <laughs> Fans are so biased. Supernatural would say Chuck had a brother and that's what season 16 will be. Those stupid fans would still say, oh my God, what great story writing. The fact they beat God at all is just stupid. He can literally read their minds and see the future. Just glad the show's over. They did put themselves into a situation of, at the very beginning they said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm omnipotent. I know everything that's happening. And then all of a sudden they just kind of trick God with the laziest trick of all time of like, hey, guess what? This guy's been doing this really obvious power vacuum thing. And we're gonna use it on you. But yeah, th that was a bit of a writing issue that I knew they, they would run into. The season started with the premise that Chuck is a writer and writers lie, then proceeded to tell the real story with retcons, abandoned canon, and lore while disregarding established themes and character growth. Sam and Dean, normally proactive and invested, sat on the bench alongside with other others waiting to be told what to do which consisted of cheap spells and oversimplified tasks instead of the thoughtful hard work. Elements of inappropriate lighting, repetitive dialogue, and melodrama and lazy exposition further undermined and exhausted the tone of the show, of the story, and its characters. That's what happens when you drag something out for 15 years. The fact that we got as much as we did was absolutely insane. Like, I'm still kind of going over the fact that I remember every, every, what was it, every September, October, for the last 10 years, like, hey, there's another season of Supernatural coming. You guys gotta watch it. That's just been my mentality for the, especially the last four seasons. Season 11, I thought was just like going to be like the end. And then it just kind of kept going. I, I wanted to see it to its end and I, I did. Was it worth it? <laughs>
uh, maybe I wanted to. This is the first show I really ever, ever got into. And I wanted to watch it all the way to its finale. And the fact that I have, I'm still kind of impressed about that. Anyways, guys, thank you for your comments. Uh, really appreciated these. These are all really cool and thoughtful ideas. Now we've got the top five best and the top five worst episodes. Now, again, I asked last time if you guys have any suggestions of poll websites. I've never done this before. I would like to include you guys in your um, thoughts. Otherwise, I'm just going to do a poll on the community page of what I think are the top five worst episodes, and then you guys will rate them because I, I'm not gonna do the comment thing, that's, that's too much math. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching the video. If you did like it, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. We will be starting season four soon, maybe in either at the end of December or in January, but I'm gonna start building up reviews for that. We're almost done, we're almost done with season 15, but we'll, we're almost there. Anyways, that's all for me. See you guys next time.